Good morning. The primer slash sealer is all dry. I ran out last night and I got some flour to put on the walls. But before we put the flour on, we need to put some caulking in some cracks and get that going. And then we can get the flour on. I'll show you what I got for flour. I got a five gallon bucket of white flour paint. We figured that was an appropriate color for this room. So that's what we got. Oh. You are making so much mass. That's what I do best. It might be a little fussy for this room, but I am going to caulk the corners because it's not sheetrock or nothing. So I'll just clean the corners up. This is supposed to dry in 20 minutes. It'll probably take a little bit longer than that, but we can do the walls and hopefully once the walls are all painted, the corners will be done. And I'm probably gonna do the same thing for where it meets the ceiling. Just clean it up and make it look a little prettier. So let's do that. And then we can get some white flour on the walls and see what it's gonna look like. I don't enjoy caulking, but it makes it look so much prettier. So it's worth it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, let me finish this lower corner. Did you caulk the other room? Yes, I did. I have to. It's just something in me that makes me do it. Even though you probably don't really need to. I just can't help myself. It's just a storage room. I know, but I still have to do it. Last little bit. And then we can get some paint on the walls. There we go. That'll do it. So while I was out getting the white flower paint, I picked up doors and I ended up getting the more fancier ones but they were on sale and were the same price as a regular plain Jane hollow core door. These doors are solid. So we lucked out there because I did not want hollow core doors. And the only cool thing is, is we can write like utility room here and then whatever we want to call the cold storage, we can write cold storage on them because they're a little fancy for a workshop. But then again, they also match the entrance door that we ended up using. So. It's kind of cool they were on sale and the same price as the cheap ones. And we didn't want to use the metal doors because we don't want to have these, what is that called? Yeah, we didn't want to use an exterior door because there's a threshold and we didn't want the threshold. So if we want to get in there with like a wheelie cart or something, we can just kind of scoot right through and we don't have to worry about going up over the threshold. These doors don't come with trim on them, but all I'm going to do is we got a bunch of scrap or leftover OSB. So I'll rip OSB down to the width we want our trim and we'll just make the trim out of the OSB and then we'll paint the trim to match everything and that'll work perfectly. So if you're doing any kind of project, I would look around for different things, not have your mindset on one thing because if we would have just got the hollow core because we thought they were cheaper, we would have ended up with that. We didn't really want hollow core, but like we said, we didn't want the metal doors. But like when we were doing certain things, the two by fours were more expensive than the two by sixes. So stuff doesn't even make sense right now, but so you just really want to look around and see because it's just weird. Just yeah. look. You have to search for the deals because right now they're out there and you got to go back and forth from different stores because it's just so weird. You can get something on sale here and not there and it's all over the place. So keep your eyes open. Ready for some white flour. And the nice pot will be once we're all done with this, we can stick our lights back in and see how bright this room is. I think I have a pourer for that, but well, I don't have it down here. Nope. I think it's funny. You would think when whoever put these covers on, they would align it so it was lined up with the handle so you could pour it easy. Like if you, it's just off a little bit. So it's kind of not as easy to pour. It's a little 
thick. All right, let's see how it looks. It looks kind of pinkish. Mm. Guess we're gonna find out when it dries. Does it make you think of a loaf of bread? I don't think that's what white flour means, is a loaf of bread. Well, so you make a loaf of bread out of white flour. <laughs> <laughs> It stays that color. I like it. Looks nice and clean. Yeah. That's the whole reason of doing it. Keep it, make it look nice and clean. Something to be able to keep clean. I'll put it on heavy so that way it like fills in the OSB so we can blow it down and wipe it off when we need to. We're also just giving a coat of paint, primer and paint to seal it because OSB I think it can off gas and I don't want that one for my food storage because this is going to be food storage for now. Until we do our root cellar, we're going to do a really cool root cellar. We're planning on doing that hopefully next year in the bank over on the other side of this, the yard in the workshop area. But that's not happening right now, but this is going to hold our freezers and stuff too. So it's going to be cool, but we want to keep it nice and clean and not have a bunch of, you know, OSB stuff around the food. It doesn't look like it would, but that drywall sealer slash primer works really good on the OSB. It looks super see-through, but then you put one coat on. That looks good. I like this color or not color. All right, I want to get some measurements because just because they give you a measurement doesn't mean that's always what they are, is what I've found. Rough opening as of right now is 81 and 3 quarters, but we have plenty of room to trim that down if we need to. And then this way, we are 37 and a half. So I said 37 and a half. It says rough opening should be 38 and a quarter, and then 82. I believe that's what we are, but let's check. All right, 38 and a quarter. Eighty-two and a half. I'm gonna tack two two by fours like this, one in each corner. So when I put the door in, it won't go anywhere on me, and then I can get it all adjusted, secured, and then I can cut some OSB for trim work. Yeah, that'll be nice. Nice.
problem. Well, how are you going to get those things off? Get what things off? Wood to open the door. Oh, right. I mean, they you need me to be inside. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's try this again. You can go inside, and then after I got the door secured, you can take off the... I do. I need these screws. No, you have to take out screws. Oh, yeah. And I got a that bucket. stand on. Bucket. Yep. Just so you'll have to tell me when we are touch. I want to know when my tops are touching. When your what is? When my tops are touching those brackets. Because then I'm going to screw the tops in. Now you're touching. Okay, now you can take those off. Off. I say, I hope you can get them out. Huh? I say, I hope you can get them out or you're stuck in there. Stop. Forever. I was just starting to freak out a little. And ever. And ever, ever. Okay, both are out. Okay, now we gotta get the black now, thing out. Now what? We gotta get the black thing out. Oh, so I'm still stuck in here. Mm-hmm. Who volunteered me for this? You volunteered yourself. It doesn't need to be lifted up. I, yeah, but I can't lift up. Just onto the side. I understand that, but we can't lift it up. The door is screwed in place. Yeah, but just the door itself. I understand that, babe, but you can't lift the door up if this hinge side is screwed in place. Oh. There is no lifting up. That's what I'm not getting. If you give me that little all setting tool, I can cut through that plastic thing. Um, hold on. Do you have a little level in there? Check on the cart. Yes, I, I've seen it. Can you put it through the little doorknob hole? Oh, thank you. Kind of curious to see. The door says it's level. The door is level, so we might have to cut this side down because the door is level. Cut the trim? We might have to cut the trim down because that floor might hump up right there. So if you can. You had the oscillating tool in there. Uh, yes. Cut that plastic piece. And then we can rescue you. Hold on, I'm just in distress. figure out how to set me you up. Can actually, say, should I say, you'll be rescuing yourself. Okay, hold on. Wow, I didn't think it was gonna be that easy. <sighs> Good thing I had that tool. No, we could've got it, we just would've had to work harder. All right, so my floor's a little high on this side. So my door trim is gonna get cut back. All right, I like that. We can make some trim for the inside out of OSB. I'll cut these back, and then once we have this wall finished off, then we can trim out this side, but that'll work for now. All right, let me get my tools. I'll have you go inside, but I'll send you over the oscillating tool, just in case you need to cut yourself out. Well, I appreciate that, because I don't want to be <laughs> stuck in there. You don't want to be stuck in there? At least it'll be nice and white. Let's get it in place and see. Okay, so if I did it like this. Feel the heat in there now. Mm -hmm. Now you got the door, it really keeps it. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, what do you think? I think it's cool. Come out to the cold. That's supposed to be the cold room. I this know. is the cold room. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Looks good. Let the paint dry. Having the door on with the heater in here is warming it up pretty nicely. The paint is still tacky. 
but it should dry pretty, or should I say it should dry a lot quicker now having that versus no heat in here without a door. So I need to rip some trim. We do that out of OSB for both doors. We can only trim out the inside right now because the outside, we still need to trim out and insulate these walls, but I don't want to do that yet because we, this wall maybe could get done, but this wall cannot because we got to run a lot of wires still. But I wanted to get this room done and this room done before we did any more wires because the powerhouse needs to be done so we can make sure the batteries stay warm. In the cold room, I want to keep an eye on see what the temperature stays around being in here like this to see what we can store in here and what we can't. So I wanted to get that done sooner or later just so we can monitor everything. And then we'll be able to start running wires and getting the rest of the shop wired up, getting some lights done. So yeah, we're not done yet. Let's continue on with trim. It is the next morning. I know you can't tell because I'm wearing the same clothes. I got my paint clothes on because I don't want to be getting more clothes covered in paint. Ah, I came down here bright and early, turned the heat back on, and it is toasty in here. So all of the white flower paint is nice and dry. It's pretty good, but I want to put one more coat on, and then this pot will be done. We can get the lights installed, and then I can get some trim up on this door and the other door. That is the last coat of white flour in this room. My glasses are covered. I don't have to clean those, but it is looking good. Happy with the outcome, we'll let it dry. We can get the lights up while we wait for it to dry. I am gonna go cut some trim. We're gonna make trim out of OSB because we have it, and we don't need to be super fancy. So we'll get some of that cut. One of the next things we got to do is get some lights out here in the shop. It's pretty dark out here. 81 in seven eights. I'm trying to decide what style of lights I want to put out here and which ones are going to work the best. So if you have a recommendation, let me know. looks nice. I like that. Just some simple trim work to clean it up. I actually think I like it plain OSB. It just kind of pops. We'll see. Maybe we'll paint it. Maybe we'll leave it. There we go. Nothing fancy. But it works. I like that. Looks good. Looks clean. Just cleans it up and yeah, kind of conceals it and makes it look better. All right, I need to get back out and check on the beaver traps again. Last time I went up there, there was nothing in there. And I forgot I have some, no, that's not the right one. I have some beaver lure. So basically this is like the scent gland from another beaver. And beavers are very territorial. So the theory is, is you put this out, the beavers smell it and they're like, hey, who's in my backyard? And they're supposed to be there. So they come out and check on it. So we're going to put some beaver lure out. It stinks. So I got some rubber gloves and we'll put it on with a stick and hopefully we'll get the beavers to come out. We're going to keep our eye out for grouse. I 
It's not very, su it's not sunny at all. I shouldn't say it's not very, it's just not sunny today. So I'm assuming the grouse aren't gonna be out on the edges of the road. The grouse usually come out on the edges of the road to warm up in the sun. And then they also like to eat the little pebbles off the ground so they can have it in their gizzards for digesting food. And I haven't seen any yet. I've been getting quite a few pictures up here with does. Last night I got like 25 pictures from two different does staying in this area. It's cooling off. The bucks, they haven't started to come out too much. I've been seeing them a little bit, but not a ton. We got some nice ones, but they haven't been super active yet. So I'm hoping with this colder weather that they will be getting active soon. did have some pretty good strong wind gusts last night so I'm kind of wondering if that big old ash tree blew over that the beavers started to eat down because they had eaten at least halfway through it so one of these storms we're gonna come back out and it's gonna be down on the ground just keeping my eyes open for deer grouse anything but so far I'm not seeing much it's been a quiet ride. It is pretty warm out today. There's the tree right there. I can't tell if they've eaten more of it down or not, but it almost looks like they have. All right, so the first trap is right over here. I hear something out in the woods. Now it's stopped. Maybe it's a beaver. Hmm. All right, let's check the trap. I almost feel like I almost feel like they've eaten down more of that tree. That trap has not gone off. All right. Let me get out some of this stanky beaver lure. You know it's bad when they tape it up. When they have tape around it, you know that means they don't want to let any of that stank out and shipping. I haven't had to use this yet. I've always had good luck without having to use it, but I think we need it this time. So let's, yeah, let's put it out on this one and then we'll take a ride up and check the other trap. Uh, I hope I don't gag. I've never had to use this. I've just heard terrible things about it, but they say it works. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Gina said if I get some on me, I can't come back in the house. Let me go get a stick to put it on. We had some pumpkins growing out in our compost pile that just grew wild. <clears throat> they got hit with the frost, so the chickens will like them. They're a little soft. Ew, look at that. Yeah, smells like beaver. So I'm gonna take this and go put it around my first trap and see if that gets them to come. All right, I want to put some over here on this rock. Some in on the trap. Or buy it. 
All right. I should get him to come. Let's check on the next trap. All right, let's check the second trap. That is right over here. Nothing. All right, let's put some more scent out. I am hoping that we'll get these guys back out here and we'll get them. The one good thing about trapping is you gotta come out daily and check, so it gives me an excuse to get out on the trails more often and see what's going on, especially this time of the year. All right. <clears throat> Whew, that smells. So beavers have scent glands and they mark their territory with them as they're going around. So I'm putting out another beaver scent. It's supposed to get them to come and investigate. So that is the goal with this. Now that we got the lure out, let's head on out and hopefully we see some grouse. If not, at least we got some lure out. Now that the paint is all dry, I can put my lights back in. I just hope I, uh... ouch, it's bright, ouch. It's bright in my eyes, I don't mean it's ouch. I just hope I don't catch my finger. There we go, perfect. I like it. All right, it is nice and bright in here. That is the main part done in the cold room and I like it. I just gotta insulate this outside wall pretty echoing in here. I want to get a thermostat to put in here. Not a thermostat. I want to get a thermometer to put in here so we can see how the temperature stays in this room. I can shut the heat off now since uh, we don't need the paint to dry anymore because it is dry. So yeah, just keep an eye on it. We'll monitor the temperature, see how everything works before we start using it. So perfect. This is where we're going to end the video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe. We appreciate all of it. And we'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.